Code Crux. This is Mahesh Gugani, and in this video, I am going to talk about CRISP relations. I recommend that before you watch this video, please go and refer the video on introduction to CRISP sets. The link of that video is given in description box. In this video, I am going to cover what is CRISP relation is, uh, what are the different representations of the CRISP relations. We will talk about some special relations and that will be followed by different type of operations that we can perform on crisp relations. We will also talk about the cardinality of crisp relations and at the end the very important topic uh, composition of crisp relations. The Cartesian product of any two set is defined as a tuple pair a comma b where the first element small a is derived from the crisp set capital A and the second element small b is derived from crisp set capital B. As it is collection of ordered pairs, A Cartesian product B is not same as B Cartesian product A. The cardinality of this Cartesian product is same as multiplication of cardinality of individual sets that is mode A by B is same as mode A by mode B. Crisp relations are a subset of this uh, bigger Cartesian product set or we can say that Cartesian product will act as a universe for relations. Relations are derived from this Cartesian product based on certain conditions. So those tuples in Cartesian product which satisfy certain conditions, they will be part of relations, the rest of will not be. Ultimately, we can say that relation defines some kind of mapping between two sets it says us that how element A is connected with element B. Each tuple in this relation is having certain membership value which is known as strength of relation and the strength of relation for crisp set is represented by the characteristics function chi. We can say that uh, if this characteristic value is 1 then that is complete relation it means the element A is completely related with element B in that tuple. And if this value is 0, it means there is no relation between the variables into that tuple. Formally, we can define chi r of a comma b as 1 if the tuple a comma b is part of relation and that characteristics value is 0 if the tuple is not part of the relation. Consider two crisp sets c is equal to 1, 2, 3 and d is equal to 4, 5, 6. Uh, we have to find out Cartesian product of this. And we have to also find out the relation and the condition for that relation is D is equal to C plus 2. Let us first compute the Cartesian product between C and D. So every element of C will be related with every other element in D. That means C by D would be 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6, 2, 4, 2, 5, 2, 6 and 3, 4, 3, 5, 3, 6. So this is Cartesian product of C and D. The condition for relation is given that D should be C plus 2. So in every tuple, the first element represents small c and second element represents small d. Let us check how many tuples are satisfying this condition. So for first three tuple, 1, 4, 1, 5 and 1, 6, none of the tuple satisfy the condition D is equal to C plus 2 and hence no tuple will be included in the relation R. For next three tuples, 2, 4, 2, 5 and 2, 6. As we can see that for the first tuple, D is 4, C is 2. So it satisfies the condition D is equal to C plus 2. So this tuple will be included in relation R. Rest of the tuples are not satisfying the conditions. For last three tuples, 3, 4, 3, 5 and 3, 6 in the Cartesian product, the tuple 2 that is 3, 5 satisfy the condition. So it will be included in relation R. So finally, the relation for given uh, sets and given condition R would be 2, 4 and 3, 5 as we can see that it is subset of Cartesian product. Let us discuss uh, different representations for the uh, crisp relation. As we already know that this membership value of tuple in the relation is defined by function chi R of A, B that is 1 if tuple is present in R and is 0 if tuple is not part of the, that relation R. The one way of re representing relation is use of uh, sagittal representation or using the pictorial representation. If we consider the same sets and same relation, we know that R is 2, 4 and 3, 5. To represent it using 
sagittal representation we have to write down all the elements of a on one side all the elements of b on other side the tuple which are in r for that we have to connect elements in this x a and b so 2 4 is part of r so element 2 from set a is connected with element 4 in set b similarly 3 5 is present in r so element 3 from set a would be connected with element 5 in set b another very convenient and powerful representation is matrix representation in this matrix the rows indicates variables from set a or elements from set a and column represents elements from set b as 2 comma 4 and 3 comma 5 is in r row 2 column 4 we have to set value 1 and row 3 column 5 we have to set value 1 rest of all elements we have to set membership value 0 null relation is a special type of relation in which none of the element from one universe is connected with other universe it means there is no mapping between any element between two given sets uh, it is defined as o is equal to all zero because we know that there is no mapping between any element and hence the membership value of that tuple would be definitely zero in complete relation every element of one set is connected with every other element in another set that means all the tuples will have membership value one the universal relation on set a is defined as u a is equal to a by a that means all the tuples of a by a will be in relation and it is denoted as u a is equal to a by a is equal to a square for the set a is equal to 0 1 2 the universal relation would be a by a that is cartesian product of a with a itself and it would contain the elements 0 0 0 1 0 2 1 0 1 1 1 2 and 2 0 2 1 2 2 the identity relation on set a is denoted as i a which is collection of tuple a comma a it means all the elements in set a are connected with themselves if a is 0 1 2 then identity relation i a would be 0 0 1 1 and 2 2 operations on crisp relations are identical to those of on crisp sets so if you don't know how to perform this crisp set operations then i recommend you to watch the video introduction to crisp sets link is given in the description box let r and s are two relations defined over universe x and y where element x belongs to set a and y belongs to set b the union of these two relation is defined as r union s and the membership value of every tuple x comma y in this union is denoted as chi r union s of x comma y and we know that the union operation always return the maximum value of two arguments so that would be max of membership value of x y in relation r and membership value of x y in relation s consider the relation r and s given like this the union of that would be this the membership value of this element is maximum of membership value of corresponding element in r and that is in s as we can see that the highest value is 1 intersection always returns the minimum value intersection of these two relation is denoted as r intersection s and the membership value is denoted as chi of r intersection s x comma y which is nothing but it's a minimum membership value of tuple x comma y in relation r and in relation s if you consider the given example the membership value of this tuple in intersection set relation is zero because the corresponding membership value in r is one and in s is zero and mean of that is zero in identical way we can compute it for rest of all the elements complement of relation is denoted as r complement and the characteristic value of element is defined as chi r complement of x comma y which is nothing but simply 1 minus the membership value of x y in given relation so if r is given like this and then its complement is defined in this way where membership value of all tuple in r complement is simply 1 minus the membership value of corresponding elements in r we can say that relation r is contained in relation s if the membership value of every tuple x comma y in r is less than or equal to the membership value of same tuple in relation s 
for given relation r and s as we can see that the membership value of this tuple is 1 and the membership value of corresponding tuple in s is 0 so 1 is not less than or equal to 0 for this case so we can say that r is not contained in s if we talk about relation r and t we can see that membership value of every tuple in r is less than or equal to uh, corresponding tuples in t and hence relation r is contained in relation t cardinality of crisp set is defined by number of elements in that set assume that a and b are two crisp sets having cardinality n and m the cartesian product of these two set would be a by b and the cardinality of that set would be n into m let us try to prove it consider the set a as 1 comma 2 and b is 3 4 and 5 so it's very obvious that cardinality of a is n is equal to 2 and cardinality of b that is m is equal to 3 here n into m is equal to 6 let us find out the cartesian product of these two sets that would be 1 3 1 4 1 5 2 3 2 4 and 2 5 the number of elements in this cartesian product is 6 so the cardinality of cartesian product would be 6 which is nothing but n by m so it proves that cardinality of cartesian product is same as multiplication of cardinality of individual sets composition is very important operation from the perspective of crisp set as well as fuzzy set and it is very much useful in modeling many natural phenomena consider that we have one relation which describes the association between plant and the disease and we have another uh, matrix another relation matrix which describes the association between the disease and the symptoms using the composition of these two relation we can find that what is the relation or association between the disease and the symptoms directly so uh, many times composition will help us to find out the interaction between the different variables and uh, the composition between relation r and s is defined by r composition s is equal to x comma z so it is collection of all the pairs x comma z where the tuple x comma y is derived from capital r and uh, the tuple y comma z is derived from relation capital s uh, and this is true for all the y belongs to capital y uh, we will decompose it and we'll understand what this means is in max min composition first we have to find out intersection of the membership value of tuple x y in r and tuple y z in uh, s for all the y's and then we have to find the uh, disjunction of that in other words uh, if we replace the disjunction and conjunction with max and min uh, it could be uh, more convenient to understand so we simply have to find max of mean of membership value of x y in r and y z in s for all the y belongs to capital y in the max product composition this conjunction or the intersection operation is replaced by the product operation rest of the procedure is identical for crisp relations both the methods will return identical results but for fuzzy uh, relations it will give different results let us try to understand it with the help of example relation r is defined as x1 y1 x1 y3 and x2 x y4 and relation s is defined as y1 z2 and y3 z2 uh, in a graphical way we can represent the same relation like this from relation r we know that which are the elements in x are connected with y and uh, from s we know that what are the elements in y are connected with z so if we connect them uh, the graphical representation would look like this the better way is to represent the relations in matrix form so r would be like this and s would be like this where in r uh, rows represents x and column represents y and in case of uh, s rows represents y and column represents z when we take the composition of r and s uh, we are supposed to get something like this uh, where we need to find out what is the relation of x with z so rows of resultant relation will indicate the variables from x and columns will indicate the variables from z let us try to understand it with the example to compute the membership value of x1 comma z1 we have to find max of mean of chi r x1 y1 chi s y1 z1 uh, that is we have to check out mem membership value of x1 y1 in r 
y1 z1 in s then we have to take mean of x1 y2 in r y2 z1 in s mean of x1 y3 in r y3 z1 in uh, s and mean of x1 y4 in r and y4 z1 in s so if we replay if we put all these values then we will get a membership value for tuple x1 comma z1 as 0 in similar way we can compute uh, the strength of membership value of all the tuples something like this and the final association matrix would be something like this this matrix t indicates uh, what is the relation between variable x with variable z consider another example x is equal to 135 y is 135 we have to find the relation which satisfy the condition y is equal to x plus 2 and s is relation which uh, should satisfy the condition uh, x less than y Cartesian product of uh, x and y would be 1, 1, 1, 3, 1, 5 and so on. Uh, to compute r, we have to select only those uh, uh, tuples who satisfy the condition y is equal to x plus 2. So only L, uh, tuple y comma 3 and 3 comma 5 satisfy this condition. And in s, the tuple should satisfy the condition x less than y. So 1, 3, 1, 5 and 3, 5 from the Cartesian product satisfy this condition. So only these tuples will be included in R and S. In matrix form, we can write down R and S as shown. Now we'll compute the maximum composition for this, uh, which is nothing but simply max of mean of characteristics value of x comma y in R and y comma z in S for all the y. So xt of 1 comma 1 is given by max of mean of the characteristics value of x1 y1 in R y1 z1 in s then x1 y2 in r y2 z1 in s and x1 y3 in r and y3 z1 in s so that is zero uh, if we go on like this we can compute the membership value of all the possible tuples in composition and finally the t would look like this 135 135 and only one element is having membership value 1 rest are zero that's it for today folks see you in next video if you think this video was useful to you then please like comment and share don't forget to subscribe the channel codecrafts press the bell icon for the notification of latest videos stay connected stay tuned thanks for watching bye bye